Good morning, or I guess it's afternoon, and thank you for joining us for our first webinar um, for the Georgia Inclusive Post-Secondary Education Consortium. Um, this is Susanna miller Rains, and I will be moderating and presenting on this first webinar, and I would like to thank um, my colleague, um, Ramatu Muhammad for all of her work on getting these together. Um, everyone is on mute currently, and we will um, be accepting questions through the chat box. And if um, you have questions, we will look at them at the end and answer them. We will go through the whole presentation first because there's a lot of information. And then if you have questions towards the end, um, we will have 10 minutes at the end to either answer questions from the chat box or to answer um, any questions that um, people have at that moment. So thank you all for attending and we will get started. Yes, hello, good afternoon. This is Rama too. Thank you for attending. Um, so today is an introduction. It is Introduction to Inclusive College in Georgia, and we just wanted to make sure everyone had the information needed um, to understand what inclusive college programs were. They're also known as inclusive higher ed programs or inclusive post-secondary education, but we felt um, that inclusive college wrapped up what we were trying to get across. All right. I always start um, all my presentations with this quote. Um, Post-secondary education is a most important key to shaping a new reality for people with disabilities. It has the exciting potential to create a future based not on low expectations, the can'ts and the shouldn'ts, but on the high expectations of productivity and personal and economic freedom. We are working to increase options for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and give them the space to be productive and have personal and economic freedom. That is the end goal, and that is why we do what we do. What is inclusive post-secondary ed? So these are for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. These are for students who cannot meet the admission requirements to attend college like a traditional matriculated student. So there's students who have IEPs who did not either get a regular diploma or they didn't pass the compass test um, or they don't have the credentials or other pieces to be admitted into college um, in a traditional format. These students are admitted through alternative admission processes that the president of the university or the college has signed off on. In Georgia and across the United States, they are four-year and two-year programs. Some are residential programs and some are commuter programs for a variety of reasons. Um, at some programs, students get um, credit. They can either get institutional credit, continuing education credit, um, they also, some students take courses for audit and it shows up as audit on their transcript, but they are um, in academic courses, completing academic coursework, um, accommodated, sometimes modified. All the inclusive post-secondary ed programs have mentoring programs. They have peers that are working with them, whether it's in the academic setting, the social setting, health and wellness setting. Some programs have um, financial mentors, um, social skills mentors. It depends on the program. But these young people have the opportunity to learn and grow um, with mentors um, around campus. Employment is the, the biggest outcome that we're looking for, um, not the only outcome for individuals um, in these programs, but as part of the internship, as part of the programs, these students are doing internships, they're participating in work study, um, they're doing on-campus, off-campus work, um, and they're also working on independent living skills so that they can be a productive um, individual, um, both in their personal life um, and in um, their community life. 
What is really important for us as inclusive post-secondary ed programs is that these programs are inclusive. They're not segregated. It's not a separate class where um, only the students in these programs are, are participating and it's just sitting on a college campus. These students are in classes. They're um, involved in clubs. They're participating in anything that traditional students would participate in the life of the university. We want these students, these programs to be academic, so they aren't um, a project search. These students are in classes with their peers, so many of them, their first year, are taking those traditional first year experience um, courses that um, their fellow students are taking. But um, at least every semester, most programs have students in at least two classes um, with their peers being taught by professors. Um, that are in the course catalog. Obviously, we want these programs to be accommodating. We want the students to get the support that they need to be successful. We want the students to have the accommodations that really do make sense for them, and we want them to be able to ask for um, what they need and ask for those accommodations. We work some with the disability services offices. It depends on the university. Sometimes it is the um, program staff who are working on the accommodations and bridging the gap between um, themselves and the professors, but we do want everyone to have what they need to be successful. They're employment focused and these programs are evaluated. Um, the Georgia programs, some are evaluated using a TIPSID grant, a United States Department of Education grant that we have and then we ask that all the schools um, you know are measuring satisfactory academic progress and other pieces like that so we want them to be done as well as they can be and to um, practice best practices why college why um, students with intellectual disabilities in college Students with intellectual disabilities see our higher education as important and attainable. Um, they're seeing their peers going to college. There are lots of TV shows and YouTube videos, um, Facebook stories that are showing individuals with intellectual disabilities going to college. And people do understand that it is, it's a real option now. It's not just um, a dream. And so, you know, these students have been included from K through 12, so why stop at 21? Why stop when they finish 12th grade? Um, college is the perfect environment to, to learn independent living skills, social skills, in a, in a real life environment and not in a manufactured environment. Um, while you're in college, students develop marketable skills they cannot typically acquire anywhere else. Um, college does give people that opportunity. And as I alluded to before, there's transformational outcomes. Um, college changed me as a person. It made me think through and better manage myself. Think about how college changed you as a person if you were someone who had the ability to go to college or have some type of higher education. While in college, it's a great place to learn the pivotal skills for adulthood. And those pivotal skills that you can learn in higher ed, self-management. Um, you don't have parents or grandparents or others watching over you and managing your day-to-day -day schedule or your teachers managing your day-to-day -day schedule. Um, you're learning how to rely on yourself to manage. You have self-determination. It's the time to make choices for yourself and to learn how to make the best choices that you can make and then to also that make choices that might not be the best, but that you can learn from and you're in an environment where you can learn from. And that dignity of risk is really, really important. Um, and then motivation. Um, the number one admission requirement for students going to inclusive higher ed programs is motivation. But we also know that that is the, the thing that keeps students um, without intellectual disabilities in school. So being able to understand what it means to go to college, what it means to go to class, and being motivated to do that um, is, is a very valuable skill to learn. Um, and 
understanding, you know, the rewards of going to class and making friends and doing well. And then the social initiation. Um, college is ripe for moments to to be social and to engage in interpersonal relations. Um, K through 12 isn't really set up for that. It's set up for instruction. And you do have options for clubs and things like that. But college is really set up to be more than just the classroom and to have those social options and to really create meaningful friendships. Some of my closest friends to this day are the friends that I made in college because we spent so much time together, not just in class, but in the dining hall, um, sitting out on the lawn, um, going to concerts, doing other fun things. And so really building those relationships and learning how to initiate social relationships is, is critical. So um, here's some quick fast facts. The Georgia Inclusive Post-Secondary Education Consortium there are 260 plus programs uh, across the United States. It changes um, a little bit every day, but there's over 260 programs. In Georgia, we have nine inclusive post-secondary ed programs, and I'll go through each one of those in a little bit. And we do have one inclusive post-secondary program in the planning stage. Currently, we get a half million dollars a year um, for five years, so we're, in, we're about to enter our last year of a TIPSID grant. Um, it's a model demonstration transition programs for students with intellectual disabilities grant from the U.S. Department of Education, and we, um, I shouldn't have changed that. We are um, working on increasing inclusive post-secondary ed programs in Georgia, and then we're currently getting a half million dollars from the Georgia legislature to be used for program development and provide scholarships. Um, I do see one person's hand is up. Um, we are going to wait till the end to answer questions. If you have a question, you can type it into the chat box or wait until we are um, done. So here's a map of Georgia um, with what is been going on the 2018-2019 school year. So these are the, the nine programs across Georgia, and then we have one that is exploring. So currently there are programs at Kennesaw State University, Georgia State University, East Georgia State College, Columbus State University, the Georgia Institute of Technology, which is Georgia Tech, the University of Georgia, Albany Technical College, Georgia Southern University, and the University of West Georgia. The star with its hollow in the middle is Georgia College, and they are um, exploring starting a program this year. They received a mini grant from us and are um, learning about how programs operate and what their um, roles and responsibilities would be if they started an inclusive post-secondary ed program. This is just a quick infographic to show you kind of the growth of inclusive post-secondary ed in Georgia over the past 10 years. Uh, in 2009, there was one program at Kennesaw State University. Um, by 2015, we'd grown to four programs. Um, during the 2016-17 school year, we had seven programs. And then 2017-2018, we had eight. And this last year, now we have uh, nine programs. And you can also see the growth from students. In, in 2009, we had three at KSU. Um, and this last fall, we had 140 pro, um, students in nine different programs. And the two largest are Georgia Tech and Kennesaw State. So we're really proud of the growth in Georgia and the number of opportunities that there are in Georgia. So the first program, um, was Kennesaw State University, and on your screen is a picture of one of their graduating classes. And if you want more information on the Academy for Inclusive Learning and Social Growth, you can go to our website, which I will share at the end, but it's www.gaipsec.org. Um, there's also the phone number and the email address for the Academy. In the top right-hand corner is a circle, um, that says CTP. CTP um, stands for Comprehensive Transition Program, and these are the designations given by the U.S. Department of Ed after a program has um, filled out a very long application and shown um, their commitment 
to all of the pieces that the Higher Education Opportunity Act has asked for programs to have. And these students, um, if you go to a, a CTP, a Comprehensive Transition, Transition Program, the students have the ability to receive financial aid, um, Pell Grants, and work study. And currently, if a school has um, their CTP, the qualified students who are vocational rehabilitation clients, if this is in their work plan and it's based on means testing, students could receive um, financial support from VR to attend um, one of these programs. But they have to be a comprehensive transition program and they have to meet the requirements um, that VR has put out there. KSU offers um, housing. So students live in the dorms if they choose, and um, they have um, the largest number of students, and theirs is a four-year program. So there's a first two-year certificate and a second two-year certificate. If you want more information, you can go to our website and link to them, or you can Google the KSU Academy for Inclusive Learning and Social Growth. The next program is the Columbus State University Goals Program. It is at Columbus State. Um, they do offer um, housing. Currently, it's a two-year program. They do not have their CTP currently, but they are working on it. And you can find more information about the goals program um, on our website. And this um, PowerPoint will also be made available to the public as well. And to the right is a picture of a goal student and a former staff person with one of their Georgia legislators um, on Inclusive Post-Secondary Ed Advocacy Day at the Capitol, which is one of the reasons we've been able to get such great legislative support. The next program I'm going to talk about is the East Georgia State College Choice Program. They are a comprehensive transition program and they do offer housing. They are a two-year program. And they, um, this is a picture of their first graduates with their president, Dr. Bomer. Dr. Bomer is a huge supporter of inclusive higher ed and we are very um, thankful for him and his advocacy for our programs. For more information, you can find them um, linked to our website as well. They are in Swainsboro, Georgia. Um, and it is a, a very small, um, college that has a real true community feel. The next program is the Georgia Tech Excel program. They are a comprehensive transition program. They're a four-year program and they just graduated their first cohort of graduates. We're very excited about that. Um, you can also link to them through our website. They have housing options available and um, pictured is Kurt Vogel, who actually um, works here at the Center for Leadership and Disability, and he uh, graduated just a couple of weeks ago. So we're really excited to have Kurt on board here and um, thankful for um, what he learned at the Georgia Tech Excel program. Albany Technical College is our only technical college right now. They um, offer a business office assistant certificate. Um, they are in Albany, Georgia. They aren't residential because they are um, a technical college and most technical colleges don't have um, residence halls. They are working on getting a couple of other certificates that students can um, earn and they will um, be working to, to increase more opportunities down there. They are our first program to have dual enrollment with a, um, a school district in their area. So we're very proud of the work that um, Albany Tech has done. And then picture to the, to the right is um, their first graduate and members from their community and their staff. So there's a couple of um, women from vocational rehabilitation in the picture, the um, Department of Education down there and the Albany Tech staff. So. Um, we're really looking forward to um, opening more doors at technical colleges. That's something that we are, are committed to doing and we're, we're making a plan to do that. The next 
program is Destination Dogs at the University of Georgia. Um, they are a CTP, and they um, this is a picture of their their first class. So um, it's them and peer mentors, and they just graduated five students. So it's very exciting. Um, they do not currently have residential um, options because of the fact that they have, um, they're renovating a really large residence hall at the University of Georgia and have very limited um, dorm rooms. So um, the students don't have that opportunity, but we're working on finding um, community living arrangements, um, apartments, and those types of things. So there might be some options, but um, they are doing a great job up at the University of Georgia. And you can also find information by linking to our website. Georgia State University, um, where I am located, is has the IDEAL program, and IDEAL stands for Inclusive Digital Expression and Literacy. They are a comprehensive transition program. It is a two and a half year program here and they um they're the only program that has a specialty other than um, albany tech but the specialty and the students really do focus on um, arts digital expression um in the communications realm so students are learning drawing videography graphic design um learning media, media relations. So students have interned at the radio station. They have interned at the radio and newspaper. And they're working on graphic design and data visualization. So um, that's really the focus of this program. There is no residential component because Georgia State has very, very limited um, residence halls and we have a very large student body. There's a lot of um, public private partnership apartments downtown um, and families have found some creative ways to um, to find housing or the students are living at home and using um, MARTA, our um, public transportation here in Atlanta. So to the right is a picture of the first graduating class with peer mentors and other students um, at the Georgia Capitol for IPSE Advocacy Day. And you can link to the IDEAL program through our website as well. Eagle Academy is the inclusive post-secondary program at Georgia Southern University. They are a comprehensive transition program and they do have residential options available. They are piloting a four-year program. They have had a two-year program but they're um, admitting students um, for the four-year program as well. Um, they were specializing in having a certificate for students who had already gone through an inclusive post-secondary ed program, and now they're accepting um, first-year students as well. So we're really excited about the opportunities in South Georgia, and um, you can find more information out about Eagle Academy by um, linking to their website on our website or um, emailing or calling them. Our newest project um, is Project Wolves at the University of West Georgia. They are also a comprehensive transition program. They are currently a two-year program. They do not have residential options, but they are working on that. Um, we're very excited to have options over in West Georgia now and um, you can find out more information about Project Wolves um, at, through our website, um, going to theirs. So some outcomes. Um, we get a lot of questions about why. Why do we want to send individuals with intellectual disabilities to college? Well, what we're learning through all the data that we're collecting both within Georgia and nationally, that this is a great option to increase employment. So um, from the National Coordinating Center, which is Think College, um, they have found that students who obtain a paid job while enrolled in IPSE programs were almost 15 times more likely to have a paid job at exit than those who did not. So almost all students are in a 
paid internship, which we would call a paid job, um, while they're enrolled in these programs and 15 times more likely to have a paid job. The data that we have from um, 2017 is that 75% of Georgia IPSC graduates um, are employed. I don't know how many of you um, know what the um, employment rate of individuals with intellectual disabilities is, but it depends on the, the data source you're looking at. It's between 17%, which is what the national core indicators say, um, and 19%. So there's data lags, so because you have to, you know, crunch the data and do all sorts of things, and so we don't have up to date this last year data, but um, if you look at the trends, they, they haven't risen much. So 17% um, to 19% are employed um, across the country. That's pretty abysmal. Um, what we're learning through the data we're collecting for inclusive higher ed through our TIPSID grant is that in 2017 to 2018, 65% of students who went to an IPSC program that was a TIPSID um, had a paid job within 90 days of graduation. Um, I think the numbers speak for themselves. Um, students are learning the skills that they need to get a job, to keep a job, and if they're ready for a second job, to leave that first job and get a second job. And so, um, there's still lots of outcome data to be collected, but the preliminary data, I think, speaks for itself. Um, we aren't doing a great job in this country of finding people with intellectual and developmental disabilities jobs and jobs that they can keep and jobs that are meaningful. And um, the students who are going to these programs are much more um, employable. They have those networks. Um, as many people know, it's can be really hard to find a job. And so creating um, professional networks with people, um, having internships, having a really stellar resume, um, and having real life experiences, not manufactured experiences, is really beneficial. So we are really um, proud of these numbers and we want to create more and more opportunities for individuals across the state of Georgia. I talked about our website quite a bit. Um, but this is a screenshot of our website and our resources page. You can find out more information on inclusive post-secondary ed at www.gaipsec.org. We have a resource tab and you can get lots of printable information and resources um, at that link on our website. And we, um, we really are, are proud of the work getting done in Georgia, and we really, um, there's a lot of information that can help support IEPs and writing IEPs and transition plans. Under that, there's information about, general information about higher ed for students, for parents, for teachers, and for vocational rehabilitation counselors. There's links to all the programs in Georgia from our website and um, other pertinent information that, that can be really resourceful and useful when trying to plan for inclusive post-secondary ed and if this is the right thing for um, your young person and your family. We also know that higher ed isn't for everyone and we just want to increase the options that um, our young people have. We do have the Southeast Post-Secondary Education Alliance. There are, like I said, there are over 260 programs across the, the country, and we have a really high concentration in the Southeast, and we have students from Georgia um, going to Tennessee for school, going to North Carolina, going to South Carolina, going to Florida, going to Alabama. Um, that's just what I know off the top of my head, but um, we wanna, you know, we, we would love for students to stay in Georgia, but we also know that um, another program outside the state might be more beneficial. So we're very um, open and you know, willing to share information about other programs. And so you can learn about the Southeast Post-Secondary Alliance at www.sepsea.org. Think College is the National Coordinating Center for Inclusive Post-Secondary Ed. They are the leaders. They have 
a plethora of resources. If you want to learn about any college um, that has a program in the United States, you can visit their website. It's www.thinkcollege.net. And they have a college search option, and you can search by states, and then you can also search by residential programs, by two-year programs, by four-year programs. It's a great database. They've also got lots of other resources for professionals, for families, and for young people who wish to um, attend an inclusive higher ed program. They are funded through um, the U.S. Department of Ed grant. Um, through the Higher Education Opportunity Act, so we're very excited to have them as a national coordinating center, and um, they're a really great group of experts, and they are collecting lots of state data, um, national data, and so you can, if you want more information on the national statistics, they've got data reports as well. They also have publications and uh, a lot of other information. So now we have some time for questions. Um, I do want to put a plug in. We have a, um, a long list of webinars that we'll be doing through the rest of the summer. And um, you can find that information on our, um, our website as well. So we wanted to give everyone an introduction to inclusive higher ed and then have the opportunity for people to learn um, about other aspects of preparing for inclusive higher ed or um, different resources that will help families and young people prepare um, to be productive adults. So um, I will open it up for questions. Um, if people want to type them in the chat box, we can answer any questions that you might have right now. We will be recording that, or we are recording this, and we will have a link for the recording on our website. Um, so we have a question from Elizabeth. What is the admissions rate? That's a great question. Um, each program has different admission rates. Um, so I don't know that specific answer. I do know that there are, um, lots of applications that get processed and there are only a limited number of students um, who are able um, who are able to be accepted because of the capacity of the programs um, that is something we can look into but every program does have a different admission rate um, i know that for a very long time ksu had a very long wait list because they would get um, a large number of applications. So um, it really does depend on the programs. And if you want to, I'll put my email address in if you're curious about specific data, people can um, email me about that. So a question from Beth, um, can deaf and hard of hearing students participate in IPSC programs? Um, if they have an intellectual disability, Yes, um, and we would just work with um, Disability Services and what used to be AMAC, which is now CIDI, the Center for Inclusive Design and Innovation on getting the resources individuals would need to um, fully participate in the programs. Great questions. I've put my um, information in the chat box and it's up on the screen. We'll take another couple minutes to see if anyone has any questions. And I'm more than happy to answer questions via email too. All right. Elizabeth asks, any idea of general admission criteria? Um, it does depend on the college. Um, 
So the number one criteria is really a young person wanting to go. Um, another quite another criteria is um, to have um, the skills to to really be able to navigate um, campus with some support, but to be um, able to um, be on a college campus and many of the schools um, would not accept someone who has um, extreme behavior issues. So those would need to be um, to worked on and, and gotten into a, a position where those would not impact their ability to participate um, in college life. Um, some schools have a reading level, other schools it's based on the adaptive skills of the young person, um, what kind of assistive technology they might need. Um, so it really does depend on the university and everyone um, who, um, you know, attends those programs is a little different. So um, if that's kind of where they're at with that. How to apply for grants? That's a great question, Karen. Um, so Ruby's Rainbow um, provides scholarships to young people. There are scholarships through the Down Syndrome Association. Autism Speaks has some scholarships. Um, if a program is a CTP, then you would fill out the FAFSA, um, the Federal Financial Aid um, paperwork, to get Pell Grants. Um, we do have some legislative funding that um, also gives some scholarship funding and we are working with vocational rehabilitation to find the best ways um, to support students as well. So there's one technical college program, um, Albany Tech. We are trying to work with other technical schools to offer programs. Um, we think technical colleges are a great place for these programs and um, we are working to get some more buy-in at local technical colleges. Um, so someone said we're in the Valdosta area. Um, how do families help encourage the development of local programs? That's a great question, because that's my main job. Um, I would say work with, um, if you have a relationship with someone at the university um, or at a technical college, um, to cultivate that, um, go find someone who um, is in the college or the university and these really are, um, they're voluntary programs. Nobody can make a school do these programs, but to really be able to sell it to someone, um, all the schools have been started through a professor or a dean or a president who really wanted this to happen. And so having buy-in from the university um, is, is the key part. Um, someone asked, can a student attend if their parent is their legal guardian? That does depend on the university. Um, so you would have to look at the university criteria um, or the program criteria for admission. So some programs will not accept someone under full legal guardianship, um, but others, others will. Um, will all these colleges have a collaborative college fair available for parents to meet them all in one place? So we've tried to figure out the best way to logistically um, make that happen, and it's very hard um, to get representatives from all the universities um, in one place at one time um, that is accessible to a lot of Georgians. We try to um, come to local transition fairs and local college fairs and exhibit. So if there are events that you would um, like to have um, people come to let us know. We um, might do a webinar um, that we could focus on each one program um, at a time and have people ask questions and learn about the programs. Um, any talk about starting programs in North Georgia, Hall County? Um, we haven't had much interest from North Georgia, but we are happy to talk to any um, people that you might um, 
could refer us to. So we um, typically don't go into a university um, cold. So we we have people who come to us or people who make connections. And so we would love to be um, in as many places as we can. And there is a big um, gaping hole in middle Georgia, but we're working on filling that one. And we would love to work on filling um, the hole in North Georgia and in Southwest Georgia. So um, more places are learning about these programs. We, we do have funding right now to help support a couple programs, explore um, opening a program. So um, that's kind of where we're at. We would love to, to do more. Um, but we can't do it without without champions on on the college campus. These are all great questions. Does anybody else have another question? All right. It looks so, Deidre. You have your hand up. I'm gonna allow you to talk I'll hit that button and do you have a what's your question all right Deidre you have muted yourself I think I can't unmute you um if you could type in your question or unmute yourself and ask it that would be great oh there you are Oh, I didn't have a question. I accidentally oh. hit the wrong button. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay. All right, anybody else have a question? All right, well, if there are more questions, feel free to email me. And we just want to thank you so much for attending. We'll have another um, webinar in two weeks. Um, and the t Ramachi, do you know the topic of that one off the top of your head? Oh, so um, with the school system. So transition process with the school system. So how to um, prepare, prepare for transition. Um, we will then have the next webinar will be on um, in being inclusive communities. And then we'll talk, the next one will be on stable accounts and special needs trust. And um, stable accounts can help you save for um, inclusive post-secondary ed. Um, we will also then have independent living success tips. We'll also um, have a presentation from GVRA on getting started with GVRA um, as a client. We'll then talk about supported decision making and alternatives to guardianship. And then we will have a, um, another webinar on advocacy and being a self-advocate. And next webinar will be on benefits navigation so understanding your students um, benefits and how they impact um, different services and supports and how to, to work within those and then we'll have we'll finish up our webinars in October with asking the parents so we'll have um, a panel of parents um, talk about their experience being parents of young people and in inclusive post-secondary ed programs Thank you so much for um, your time today, and I um, thank you for your questions, and um, we hope you will join us for others. So thanks so much, and have a great day.